Film Flex Friday in the house, Linda Murray and Alina Popa. And we are on the beautiful new set in our third season. Great set, right? I know, it's pretty amazing. I just keep on looking left and right and I don't believe this is us in the new amazing studio uh -huh. here at the Wings of Strength on Olympia headquarters. <laughs> yeah, and it did well, you know, just walking on this set, it's like I can feel the energy. This is like new. This is like, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. This is our third season. I can't believe it's already the third season. 2022, our pilot episode of the all new Femflex Friday. Same amazing topics, amazing guests that we have here for you. And we do plan a full season for you guys with a lot of topics of a lot of things that interest you. So mm -hmm. don't hesitate to reach out to us mm -hmm. and let us know what you want to see. Yes. yes. And uh, what do we have planned for our first episode ever? Wow. You know what? Uh, we just had uh, on the road for our, um, our first trip and man, it was amazing because this is the first time that we had a group of women and we were at the NPC Women's first workshop, annual workshop, and that was so exciting. That was absolutely amazing to be there, to feel the energy, to see mm -hmm. all of those athletes. So to me, what was so amazing is the fact that this has never been done in the Federation. So it was the initiative of Sandy Williamson, our uh, mm -hmm. head judge, right? Mm -hmm. Olympia head judge. Mm -hmm. And she just wanted to make a seminar and a workshop for women in the industry, especially for the NPC women mm -hmm. who are beginners, like they just step into the sport. So mm -hmm. they just want, she just wanted to offer this as a tool. And what was amazing was the fact that there was really no cover fee. So there were 350 athletes, no charge, not only that, but they had this amazing, generous uh, goodie bags for yeah. the athletes. And they had, we had breakfast and we had lunch and all of these pros there ready to instruct mm -hmm. the new coming uh, female athletes mm -hmm. and uh, give them, you know, uh, help yeah. on how to start in the sport. I was, I was really impressed because I didn't know that it was free. So, you know, like you said, we had breakfast and lunch. And here's the amazing part. I believe every... Um, for every division for women, we had the representation there in every division, mm. meaning like the top women in the world. I believe Absolutely. every single Miss Olympia. It was more than that. We had 18 yes. pros. Mm -hmm. There were 18 pros are on deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had quite a few of them speaking. But what was very interesting is that they also had one-on-one -on -one time with uh, these amazing, mm -hmm. amazing Olympians yeah. uh, and pros, successful pros, mm -hmm. right? So... Just looking at it, you know, I'm like, I looked at Yarishna, right? Mm -hmm. Yarishna yeah. Ayolo, right? Right. She was there. This athlete has 2.7 million followers. 2. And 7. I have seen huge lines mm -hmm. at expos, mm -hmm. right? Waiting half an hour or more than that an hour to take a picture with her. Well, all these wellness athletes in the NPC division had Arishna for themselves for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And Arishna literally walked them through those mm -hmm. poses. I mean, this is priceless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This was, is huge. It was definitely priceless. I mean, it was just uh, really nice for me to see uh, the women with their like hair down. They were, everybody was relaxed, they're in their off season. I don't know if bikini, if the bikini competitors have an off season, but all of the competitors look great from the Miss Olympia, uh, Andrea Shaw, all the way down to every single division. Yes. And I was impressed um, because I'm a fan also, you know? a fan and I got to see them. I'm always seeing them on stage looking perfect and it was nice because again, I'm a fan to see them in person up close and to see how they interact with the um, with the competitor, with the NPC competitors, the amateurs there. This was there. a really, really a fantastic event and um, what uh, I was moved by the fact that the women 
communicated between them, even if they didn't know it, uh, you know who they were. I had a lot of girls coming to me and telling me their story just because mm -hmm. there was another w w female ear there to listen to them, and they all had beautiful stories and they just mm -hmm. wanted to to talk. And there was this mm -hmm. this feeling of camaraderie mm -hmm. in that seminar in that mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. which is what inspired me and Linda yes. to bring up. Uh, as a topic of our pilot episode, the camaraderie, female camaraderie, camaraderie in the sport. Mm -hmm. So as we were thinking about it, right, mm -hmm. we we kind of like figured out that there would be a sort of camaraderie. Then there's like one backstage. How do females, mm -hmm. female athletes, present themselves backstage, right? Mm -hmm. Or how do they interact with each other? Mm -hmm. And then there's the other the other component because obviously we've been both in the gym, right? How do you interact with other uh, female athletes in the gym while you train mm -hmm. in the process? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Linda, let's go back to when you were training, right, in the gym and you were preparing and getting ready to be on stage. Yeah. How was it like for you? Did you yeah. have any women that you were training with? Yeah. What was the atmosphere? You know, that, and that's what uh, is so different because I started back in the mid-'80s. And I remember walking into the gym for the first time and learning that the women there had only been there for a short time because they just started allowing women to work out at that gym. So this prior is to that, it was, it was co-ed. And, we're talk and when you think about the 80s, it's not like it was the middle age, right? But it was the mid 80s. And because um, I walked into my first hardcore gym in 1984, but uh, and there were only maybe a handful of women, seven women in that gym training, and so it was. It was different. It was. It was an experience as far as, and I believe also that during that time, because we were in small numbers, yeah, you know, and we knew each other by name. Um, I knew what competitions they were going in. We were actually preparing for the same competition. And so uh, there was a camaraderie, together. right? We worked together. There was definitely camaraderie. Support, right? Yes. Did support. you have among these ladies, the, was any of these ladies your training partner? Did you train with women? Because mm -hmm. just like a quick parenthesis, mm -hmm. and like in my experience, it was very hard mm -hmm. to find women to train with. Most of the times I was training with guys, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I, I had my episodes, but did you have any uh, women to train with? Was yeah. somebody your training partner? Yeah, same, same as you. Um, I trained with guys, you know, I think, um, but I did train with the women. Okay. Um, and again, the people that I saw at the shows, because it was just a small little group. Mm -hmm. So I knew, and it, the thing that's interesting is, is I got to watch that competitor like that I knew we were going to be on the stage together, yeah. watch her going through her process, her transition, how she was training. And uh, I think we, it was, it was really a, a good experience. We did work together as far as um, just, I would say we, I got motivated because I got to see what they were doing and see how their physique changed. And of course there was a lot of covering up as athletes do. <laughs> You know, we do it for a yeah. lot of reasons, but yeah, it was it was smaller numbers, so, so it was did, a lot easier. Yes, to to stick together. For you camaraderie. did feel that kind of support. Yeah, it was a lot easier then. Yeah, I think it's more challenging. So, what about you? Yeah, I was. Um, uh, I remember in particular, uh, I was in Switzerland. Uh, and I was training for uh, 2008 World Championship at mm -hmm. that time. And I had my best friend ever, best friend in Switzerland. Her name was Rahel Ruch. And she was also a uh, female bodybuilder competitor. Uh, she started being in a different division, but then she, she moved to um, IFBB. And uh, mm. actually that year when I was preparing for this show, we trained together. And it was like... One of the best years ever, after uh, ever. Also because you know she was my best friend, but she was actually very structured, very organized, and she was very supportive. And we were literally like amazing training partners. Mm -hmm. So we went on to compete in the same division, in the same weight class, because we had women's bodybuilding.
anything, and it was the heavyweight class. Mm -hmm. And I got first, and she got second. Wow. And we both qualified for our pro card that year in 2008. And this wow. was an amazing experience mm -hmm. to both of us, to get to train with your best friend, right? Wow. And do the same things, and the love and the support were amazing. So did she have more, she had more experience than you, because you at the time when you guys started training together? Uh, we were kind of like about the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I have competed at that point uh, a few times in Romania and she was competing in different federations I in see. Switzerland. I see. And then we met in the middle with IFBB. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think, you know, what's really nice about that um, is, you know, we were talking about men, right? Yeah. And so often we see women getting their information from guys, and how many times have you, like, in the gym, watched a woman, she's being trained, or she's there with her husband, or, or some guy's trying to motivate her, and she's doing exercises or things, and you think, of course she's doing bench press, of course she's doing upright yeah. rows, because that's, men love bench press, they love upright rows, they love, uh, you know, training, hitting big biceps, and it's nice when you have that opportunity, to be with a woman you guys can share. Yes. Share tips and just your experience, yeah. your journey. I mean, even in the recent years, you know, I had, um, when I trained for seven years, I worked and I trained at Armbrist Pro Gym. Mm -hmm. And then in these years, there were the diversity of the divisions were significant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Bikini came in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, women's physique came in 2012. Mm -hmm. So there were more and more athletes coming mm -hmm. at Armbrist Pro Gym is like literally almost 50%, everybody has done a show. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very uh, competitor oriented mm -hmm. gym. Yeah. So, of course, a lot of women, and I remember, you know, like, uh, there was this female camaraderie. Like, we would train sometimes two or three girls, or we'd be like, hey, uh, you know, I trained with all of those competitors, amateurs or professionals, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you would be like, hey, you want to hit legs on Sunday? And then mm -hmm. we would do that. So, yeah. definitely... Um, that female camaraderie in mm -hmm. the in the gym is yeah. there, and it's beautiful, and it's it, it's amazing because what I like is when you start to communicate. Hey, I had this diet and it didn't do good well on me, or I tried this supplement and it was horrible, right? So when you start to exchange information mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know help each other and support mm -hmm. each other that way, I think that is what yeah. the real camaraderie is about. Yeah. You know, we yeah. are women; our bodies are different than men. That's men's, right. So and we, we are doing an extreme and... sport. Mm -hmm. So let's help each other yeah. with tips on how to achieve yeah. our goals. I, I love training with men. There's a lot that I learned because, of course, I mean, as far as like size and, and the way they train. But at the same time, like you said, we're women and I care about body fat. So if I'm dieting down for a competition, the way I have to diet, you know, how many calories I can eat, yeah. do I have to do more cardio activity than the guys? So... Yeah. I know. I mean, I, I used to, when I was training with guys on Sunday, Sundays were the leg days at Armbrist. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we were finishing, and it was everybody's cheat day, and we were going to uh, all sushi, all you can eat sushi place. And these professional bodybuilders, like at 200 something pounds, 240, 250, I mean, the amount of food and sushi they could put down, I could not. Mm -hmm. Right? So I could keep up with them in a way, it's somewhere, almost yeah. there. But I couldn't put up with all that food. You know, they, right. I was so jealous. They can mm -hmm. afford all this food and we as women we cannot because yeah. we carry all this fat and we gotta be more you know pay more attention mm -hmm. to that oh yeah oh yeah how what do you think about the um, backstage camaraderie mm -hmm. what's your experience with that because that's when you know like uh, let's say in the gym you already know people you create relationships but when you go backstage mm -hmm. right that is uh, one of the things that um are more difficult, I think, because mm -hmm. some of these athletes you maybe never never saw, right? Mm -hmm. You you see new people, you're not familiar with them. So um, how do you see that? Yeah, backstage, again, because during my day, there were only a handful of women competitors. And when I look at today and the number of competitors, women backstage preparing to, to go on that stage, um, you know, I would say like as far as my experience, because I come from the background, a cheerleading background where you work together as a team and it's like we're supposed to all come together and it's about cheering that other person on. So uh, it was, I would say when I first entered and started competing on a professional level, 
I thought the camaraderie between the women mm -hmm. in the in the early '90s, I thought it was great. I okay. thought it was amazing. And now, don't get me wrong, that I had. You know, as far as when you think about Laura Cravel and some of the competitors that was always like, we were neck and neck. And so we all there to win, right? Of course, But yeah. we worked together. We really did work together in the 90s. And I remember that throughout. Uh, I would say that when I returned, re retired five years, and then came back to the Olympia, I remember one of my first thoughts backstage was I did feel like it was a cold atmosphere. Mm. Um, now, upon my return, uh, Iris Kyle was, um, her and I were always, you know, we had a interesting and challenging um, competitiveness going on between yeah. us. But... You know, and, and I, I actually had, uh, I would say, I was a little bit uncomfortable because, first of all, I thought, like, it should be the way it was in the 90s, but the fact is, it was not. And I always feel like that comes from the top down. And yeah. so if you have someone that's a representative, and at the time, Iris Kyle. They said the tone. Know, a lot of them yep. wanted, wanted to beat Iris, but there was this energy where the competitors were not like talking to each other. It was just a different place. I had to realize, and it, but it took a while because during those first times, I was only there three years in 2002, 2003, and 2004. Mm -hmm. And what I had to learn is, is just because, you know, Iris Kyle had her personality and her energy did not mean that she was not a nice person or not helpful. Yeah. That was the way, that was her approach. That, that was her energy. Yeah. So it was different and I had to make that adjustment. And now I'm really in um, receiving and understanding yeah. I mean, definitely, if you want to look and dissect it in a, in a certain way, it is an individual sport, mm -hmm. right, in the mm -hmm. end of the day. And then especially back in the day, right, when we didn't have all the social media, we didn't have all the, the, the internet, we didn't have all the mm -hmm. connection, right? Everybody was isolated in their corner or in their gym, in their state, mm -hmm. training. So there mm -hmm. was this idea of competitiveness. There was this idea is that, that, you know, we are enemies, even backstage, I think. <laughs> I think that now days with the opening, you know, like uh, people talk. I mean, I, I talk to girls and they always keep on saying, yeah, I saw this girl. And then they reach out on Instagram and DM them and tell them, I think you're amazing. So, you know, like I feel that this opens up more camaraderie, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I remember when I came to United States, mm -hmm. mind you, I have competed in Europe for, uh, I think my first show, 2003 till 2010 when I made it to the Arnold. Uh, so for all those years I competed in the United States, I remember there was absolutely zero communication backstage mm. in Europe, right? Okay. But then all this time I was like, Look, watching you know everything over the ocean, right? What was happening? Because the pro stage was here, and right. I like saw all these big names and all these athletes. And so when I finally made it to the Arnold, I was like so, you know, so happy. Mm -hmm. It was such a big accomplishment. I was mm -hmm. so excited. So I was like thinking, I'm going to see this, and I studied the list, of course, of the yes. the uh, athletes invited, and I was so excited to see to get to see them. And I have to say that my first impression was good, uh, was some girls were more friendly, right, mm -hmm. than what I used to know in Europe. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, the, I, I did have this particular impression, and again, it has maybe something to do with the way people are backstage. We can touch That's the right. topic right. a little later. Right. Uh, I do remember that I was so disappointed because, again, I was looking up at all these big names, and then um, I, was, I got eighth, so after the prejudging, mm -hmm. they came and they just called the top six, so obviously I was not there. And I wanted to say goodbye to everybody who competed, who I met there, and I was this little, you know, European girl that sp spoke with a very strong accent, as opposed to now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yes. And I remember that I went to Betty Pariso, and she was sitting down on a chair, 
And I said, I want to say goodbye. Thank you so much. It was amazing. And then she just turned around and looked over her shoulder to me and she gave me this, okay, goodbye. But with this energy as if I disturb her Mm -hmm. and I just felt so much disappointment Mm -hmm. and so sad in my heart. Mm -hmm. I was like, but you you are amazing. You should like, please smile and be friendly. But you know, in the end of the day, I understand that we are all different backstage, right? We all carry uh, ourselves and we all carry that um, the stress in a different mm-hmm. way. What is your experience, mm-hmm. right? How are you? Were you uh, friendly, open, smiling, or did mm-hmm. you feel like you needed to preserve your energy and mm-hmm. going within yourself to mm-hmm. be able to get ready for the stage? Yeah, you know what? Um, I was, I was actually, I think, pretty comfortable. Okay. As far as because, let's face it. Um, you spend that 16 weeks, you spend that entire year yeah. preparing, right? And so a lot of times uh, when, you're, when we go on that strict diet, you, I have more peace. I was I'm much stronger on the yeah. inside. Now the times where my preparation prior to was not at uh, its best, then that's when I was a little bit more, I would say, insecure, a little you were bit insecure nervous. and nervous, stressed, right? Yeah, more stressed out because I think, in my case, with me being the uh, the champion and having to defend my mm-hmm. title, sometimes much easier. Sometimes I knew I was off, uh, and so it's you have a lot of pressure on you. But I, I always, I was always able to find the. Um, to be at peace. So if someone walked up to me, yeah. you know, and I think that's really key is you work to be present because everything that we do on that stage um, and even backstage, if you're preparing and you're focusing and you're thinking about your posing routine and you have your headphones on, then I look serious, you yeah. know, because I'm really thinking about the routine and not wanting to miss certain poses, to listen to the music, yeah. to be present. Um, and that's also a signal, right? I mean, my my word, I have my music, right? Don't approach me, right? right. If that is the situation, mm-hmm. if that's yeah. the case. Yeah. Because, you know, um, I did hear uh, one of my friends, she's a pro uh, physique competitor, mm-hmm. and I met her the other day, and she said, Alina, you wouldn't believe the first pro show I did, I went to uh, another one of my uh, uh, colleagues, uh, another mm-hmm. competitor in the physique uh, mm-hmm. division, mm-hmm. and, um, well... I asked her to, to hook up my, uh, my shoot and she refused to. She said no. She turned around and left. So I was shocked. Wow. I was like, who would do that? This is a pro. Right. I mean, I don't, know, I don't have names, right? Mm-hmm. But just the idea that somebody wouldn't want to hook up your, your bikini. Right. And I said, why do you think she did that? And she said, uh, my friend said, maybe she felt insecure. Maybe she felt that she's not ready. And mm-hmm. she really didn't want to look at other bodies mm-hmm. because that would shook their confidence, yeah. right? So yeah. she preferred to stay in her bubble. At the same time, look at Andrea Shaw. I yeah. mean, this girl yeah. is just rolling around, joking with everybody, yes. you know, helping everybody. Like, she's amazing, mm-hmm. right? And she's a she's champion. Amazing. She's not arrogant. She helps Absolutely. people when they need it. So I think in the end of the day, it's a matter of personality. Yes. It's, right? it's def- without question, it's definitely a matter of personality. Also, let's touch up on the, on the fitness division, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. Like, it's in the industry. There is no bigger camaraderie mm-hmm. than the fitness competitors. That's right. That's right. No, no bigger camaraderie. I was just talking so about... So why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, you know, again, I think it's personal. It's like, it, de- it depends on the individual. And um, it really depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. It depends on... Uh, if they're secure at that time, uh, sometimes you'll see a competitor. And when you know you're off, um, it's that insecurity, Yeah, I think, I th- you really. Because even th- during the times when I was off and I knew I was off, I may have even felt like I'm not going to win this Olympia. Yeah. There was never a reason for me to not be nice or be myself. And I also, I mean, today I really understand that when something happens, that I can't take it personal. Of course, yeah. You know, and that um, has nothing to do with me. 
maybe caught that person at the wrong time. Yep. And uh, so I'm glad they have people backstage to help us with your posing suit, because that really, <laughs> that totally was not yeah. cool. That, that yeah, totally of course, wasn't cool. of course. So. But I mean, I do believe that nowadays, as I, I just mentioned with the social media and, you know, more reach over the internet, uh, the athletes, they have a bigger camaraderie. They know of each other already. They study their competition and then, mm -hmm. you know, they meet backstage and then they connect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, if we were to, uh, to give people, the athletes backstage, some tips on mm -hmm. how to make it uh, easier or let's say the first timers that just can come in the sport right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, how to make it easier for them, some yeah. tips. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's like we said, first, um, you have to do a lot of work on the outside. Right? Mm -hmm. To prepare yourself. You prepare yourself physically, and during that process, usually we prepare ourselves mentally because it's just a given when you're on such a strict diet yeah. that you, a lot of times, you have to go inward. So I do feel that before you go to that first competition, if you do your homework and you study, you get a, a coach, um, you want to make sure that you do that homework first. Yeah. Coach, go on uh, online and look at YouTube videos to um, make yourself, like, to be prepared, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's take a break, because we, we really do have more great tips, and we want to talk to that beginner for your first time. It's all about you. And so when we return, it'll be about you. back after this short commercial break and as Linda was just talking about doing your homework and preparing already home mm -hmm. uh, another way to uh, be ready for this Linda was mm -hmm. to join if you're it's the first time you've ever done a, a show if you're an NPC athlete you're a true novice you haven't done anything else mm -hmm. you don't know what's happening backstage mm -hmm. you don't know how a show flows you don't know what an expediter's job is you don't know any of that mm -hmm. you can join a girls team right a girls mm -hmm. team right Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, trainers out there who are actually doing just this. They mm -hmm. help a lot of girls. And then when you mm -hmm. go in a show, right, you have yes. maybe a local trainer in your state, in your gym, and then mm -hmm. he has 10 competitors. So you go all as a team. You have your uh, colleagues, you mm -hmm. have uh, your, your comrades, <laughs> yes, call yes, them, right? Yes, right. They're there to help you. They can touch you up. They give you each other confidence. Mm -hmm. And maybe a couple of girls, they have already done it, and then they already know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that camaraderie is going to be mm -hmm. so supportive and so helping. So if you don't know what to do, and you are worried, and you think that the world out there backstage is really a hostile world, mm -hmm. just join a girls team, make some mm -hmm. friends, the trainer will tell mm -hmm. you what to do, the girls will support you, and your first couple of shows will go smooth. Yes. And then you're going to have all this confidence and experience. Mm -hmm. right? I love that point that you made, because we were talking about that, the importance of, yeah. of a coach and being on a team, because that didn't exist when I was competing. Oh, yeah. And in the beginning, when this whole, the phenomena of, of uh, coaches and teams, and I'm like, what is this about teams? And, and I've even heard some competitors make comments and talk about like the team thing, and they, uh, some of them felt excluded. But without question, the point that you've, you're making uh, 
it helped so much. I can only, I couldn't even imagine, it would be challenging to go into this environment today oh, yeah. with so many women backstage. But if you have a team and you're part of a team, then you know you'll have someone to help you with your, your suit and, your, and the glue or whatever. Another tip I have for you ladies, um, it's just to be kind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Be kind to each other because, uh, you mm -hmm. know, we are all tired. Uh, we've all gone through all of these diets. We're all nervous. We, mm -hmm. Some of us have reached their peak. Some of us haven't, right? Mm -hmm. But just be kind to each other and try to help each other, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, just encourage and give a, a smile. And let's say I know that some athletes are different. Like some athletes, they go inside themselves, right? Yes. They cannot just yes. be all friendly and in order to preserve their energy to get on stage, mm -hmm. they need to internalize everything in that situation right it's okay because I mean mm -hmm. we cannot ask people to be who they're not That's right, right. That's but right. with kindness you can say a no with kindness as mm -hmm. opposed to a no with hostility yes right, right? so it's right. okay to keep your boundaries but be kind about it mm -hmm. right and yeah. if you can help help if you cannot help from you know because there's something that comes from mm -hmm. inside you or mm -hmm. something like another circumstance at least say a kind no mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I agree with you being kind it's gosh that's just the foundation right yeah. of, of everything uh, and it's really nice. I mean, that's, I think from the workshop, I got to see the women top five in the world in each category. And I got the opportunity to see them not in that competition mode. And they took the time with every competitor uh, at that workshop. And I saw nothing but kindness. It was so nice. Because now is the time to empower ourselves, mm -hmm. right? I don't think there has ever been a better time for women to come together and mm -hmm. push, you know, this movement of helping, empowering, mm -hmm. encouraging, you know, uh, and literally being there for each other mm -hmm. in everything we do, mm -hmm. which is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So I was just also thinking, if you are at the other end, <laughs> yes. where you are not the one one that like I was giving the advice of being kind but you're the one that is actually so intimidated and you you are not part of that girls team and you don't know what to do right so mm -hmm. what I was asking myself what would I do so mm -hmm. I would go and ask people for help obviously mm -hmm. if I need it but mm -hmm. you must also be ready and be prepared to be met with a no <laughs> yeah. like some athletes will not want to help you or will not be able to help mm -hmm. you so mm -hmm. don't take it personal That's don't it. be upset just but also don't be afraid to ask mm -hmm. if you need help go and ask maybe mm -hmm. one person won't help you but maybe the second will help you and yeah. the, or the third will help you mm -hmm. right yeah. i do believe that there are a lot there's a lot of kindness in us you know oh, and oh, as i was saying as we saw in the npc seminar like the connection between these women and the energy that was flowing was absolutely amazing and mm -hmm. i could see all this potential mm -hmm. so i know that there is this beautiful energy that unites us, mm -hmm. that makes us be creative, that mm -hmm. makes us want to help each other and be successful in yeah. what we do, in particular in this sport where we are right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that point that you made. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Do not be afraid to ask for help. And if you receive a no, no, don't take it personal. You know, uh, you just got to... Know who you are, be confident, you prepared hard for this day, and ask for help. And there will definitely be somebody to help you eventually. You know, I do believe in that. As I said, I do believe in that. I do believe in this uh, true camaraderie. Uh, this is beautiful. We have seen it uh, at this event uh, with the MPC workshop. Uh, that Sandy Williamson put up a couple of weeks yeah, ago in Nevada, yeah. and we're looking forward actually to have, it's going to be an annual, so next year uh, possibly it's going to be on a two-day event, so we're going to wait for all of you. But in the meantime, we have a full season to go, Yes, right? right? So let's go strong, let's stay strong, united girls together backstage and off stage and in the gym, and uh, we're all going to be successful, and I know about that. And actually, we want to hear about your success stories. That's right. That's why we're <laughs> here. See you at our next episode of FemFlex Friday. Thank you for being here with us today. <laughs> <laughs>